Welcome to Outdoors with the Common Man. Let's go have some fun. Thank you. What's going on guys? Coyote here, outdoors with the common man. We're out here today in the back 40 of my property there and I'm going to be taking down my old bushcraft designed blind. Thanks for that comment or that request about having to do bushcraft. I'll get onto that suit shortly enough as soon as I got the time. But as you can see this thing back here is dilapidated. We're going to fix that today. I'm going to start by tearing it all down. Bugs are crazy today, guys. It's got to be close to 90 degrees out today. Got to love hunting in order to get out here and do it on days like this. So I'm going to tear this down, and then we're going to start up and show you a different project. A good bush man should always have some rope on him, I'm guessing. Got some rope with me, so we're going to go ahead and Instead of doing this a straight lean-to style, I'm going to rope around it and make a good netting web, you know, kind of like a spider web to set my branches across from my uh, roof covering. Here's what it looks like from the front. So I'm going to tear it all apart. But these four trees that I got sitting in here, that's going to be it. And then I'm also going to stretch it over to that mostly dead birch over there so that I have more of a shooting windows at this over here. And my food plot's right over there. And I shot the six point last year coming from there over. So we'll catch you in a minute. As you can see, I cleared it all out. This was where it was. So now I'm going to take some of that same black twine that I was using on the bridge. That might not, that video might not be out yet, but I'm going to go around these four trees. Probably about yay high and then I'm gonna come from this tree to that one and same thing there and then what I'll end up doing is I got some tarps at the house I know not quite bush crafty but I'm trying to make it nice so I can start bringing my children out hunting with me this year and I want to make it a little bit bigger so I can get different view of the hunting to the hunting land I have right here this private spot and so we'll go ahead and do the twine up and then I have the tarps like I said so I'll end up doing the twine up top putting the tarps over it and then I'm gonna do the same thing down here where I want basically where I want my shooting windows at and then I'll have I have actually some more tarps that I'll put over that and then I'm, I will be stacking uh, leaf litter and most of these pieces of wood that I use and everything else around it so that it blends in more you know and we'll go from there so I don't know how much rope it's gonna take but I'm gonna start out with a good amount like I said I'm gonna start out with the four trees here in the middle first the heat and the bugs man it's almost make me leave looking for the fact that I live to do this I think it was Stephen Arnella from Meat Eater that says I live to hunt and I hunt to live it's kind of how it is if I can get out of being a truck driver and spending my days just doing this kind of stuff I would Hopefully with your guys' support and your guys' comments and likes and subscribe subscriptions to the channel, one day I'll be able to do that. Help a brother out. <laughs> like I said, I don't know how much cord it's going to take, but I know I'm going to use a good amount of it to begin with anyways. Because I want to be able to go around these trees several times. On the outside and on the inside, so I have a nice little perimeter to start with, and then I'm going to go ahead and make almost a spider's web on the inside to hold all those sticks and the leaf litter and the tarp and everything else, so that 
when it's cold or when it's rainy or when it's snowing, I can still bring the fam out to go hunting. My daughter, she's going to be a down-home redneck princess. She will be out here cowboy killing more things than most boys any time around her age. She is right into it. My son likes it. He loves shooting his 22. But neither one of them are old enough yet to actually legally hunt in New York State. They can come with me. They just can't help. Sitting in this blind here last year during muzzle loading season. And I had a chipmunk come right down and sit on the barrel of my muzzle loader. That's probably him, or her, probably sitting over there going, ha, that's that guy last year, ha <laughs> I sat on the rifle. Well, as soon as squirrel season opens up here in New York State again, for all squirrels, and I'm going to try to eradicate as many as I can out of these woods, because they're a small animal, but man, when they come tromping through the woods during hunting season, it sounds like there's a goddamn... 300 pound, you know, 30 point freaking deer running through. Then it turns out to be a squirrel or two or a chipmunk or two running and playing and hiding nuts. You take the spine, tie it up, and you start wrapping. Tie it around this one, wrap it around, go to the next one, wrap it around, go to the next one, wrap it around, go to the next one. Keep doing that. And then I'm going to switch the wrap up so that I get an inside line as well. three times around the outside I'm going to switch it up and come around on the inside of it so there's a double line there so when I go to do the webbing across the top there's extra to hold on to so it's a simple it's just turning direction Like I said guys, there's three on the outs, two on the ends. And when it comes time, I can run wire from here to the front, from here to the other side, and just keep bobbing and weaving back and forth. Make a nice little netting for the roof. It'll be nice. Hey guys, welcome back to Outdoors with the Common Man. We're out here again in the woods trying to get this blinds finished out for the most way. Uh, we went ahead and wrapped the twine, like I said, from the tree to the birch over here. And back around. I got the kids out with me and the wife. She's behind the camera right now. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now do a base row through here so that we can have a nice, decent, wide shooting window. And we're going to, so that when we go to take the rest of the logs and twigs and branches with the leaves and everything, we can stack them yeah. up against it, and we're also going to do cross between the between the wires, cross through there, to cross back and forth through there, make a little nice spider web on the top, so it holds a lot more twigs and branches. Then I'll go ahead and, like I said, bring my tarps out, and I'm going to throw them over top, so that makes a nice waterproof layer and snowproof layer, so that when we get in here this fall, no matter the weather, we'll be alright to sit out here, even if it's pouring down rain, they still sometimes come through. Um, yeah. This is going to be our main rifle muzzle loader stand. Um, 
little deep further in the woods in another video I'll show you where I'm gonna set up my bow stand for this season because hooray I'm finally a bow licensed hunter in New York State It'll be my first year doing it so hopefully we get a nice bow shot this year but thanks for keeping watching thanks for liking and subscribing and we'll show you some more when I get done be a lot more video but kind of hard without my tripod today so we'll catch you again when we get some more done thanks all right guys welcome back to the blind well, it's been a couple of weeks. I've been doing a lot of miles in the truck, so we got the blind finished up. We went ahead and I grabbed some more cheap tarps, nice camo ones. We went ahead and threw them through all the way around. We already had them on the top. And now we went ahead and with all the trees that I, you know, little saplings I had cut down to be out of my, for shooting lanes and stuff. That we put in here now we've taken all their little leaves i prefer the beach because they don't when they die off they don't drop off the tree they just dry up and die so we went ahead and took all those threw them up top and i'll take you here inside in a minute what's nice is i did it right next to this birch tree this white birch and birch bark will burn even when it's wet i don't know if i've said that before in other episodes it's due to the sugar in it or something like that but it'll burn when it's even wet so when I want to have myself a nice little fire because I'm putting a little rocket stove in here for the really cold days this winter we'll be able to keep my kids warm keep me a little nice warm or I can heat up my coffee real quick everybody in this area uses wood stoves pellet stoves to heat their houses so they're the deer and the animals in this area are used to wood smoke not to mention the Native Americans if I'm not mistaken used to use wood smoke over their clothes or hides or whatever they had on in order to mask their scent from the animals so there's myths here there's myths there there's proof and there's fact everybody's got their own story myth or fact doesn't matter i don't think it bothers them i've sat here before right in this stand with a cigarette in my mouth and shot a deer i've put a just put a cigarette out shot a deer I've lit, just lit a cigarette up, shot a deer. And everybody I know says that cigarette smoke will deter a deer like no tomorrow. But I've shot at least four deer in the last three years with a cigarette in my mouth or just put one out or just lit one off. I don't think it bothers them at all because it just smells like smoke. And by the time it gets way across my uh, hunting side, over here way back there to my food plot it's probably dissipated enough where there's just a small hint in the air so I'll go ahead here and I'll take you inside the blind now and show you around I'll try to get you up top to show you the leaf coverage there's another reason I do the leaves on the top is because that's a natural water deterrent the rain will come hit the leaf the leaf will go ahead and roll it off instead of laying on my tarp and just making a big puddle of water but what I'll do eventually is when I get the next rainstorm and I come out and I notice that there's exactly this one spot where the water's puddled up, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and poke a small hole in that and that'll allow the water to drain out just in that one spot. But I'll take you inside the blind now and show you how I made it up easily. This blind right here, I already had my little hatchet, I already had my foldable saw. I already had all this line, got it from a rummage sale for like three dollars. Well, shoot, it's got to be close to a thousand to two thousand yards of this black twine that I like to use. I've I've used in other stuff, other projects. Um, I'll take you inside, show you around. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do in here is, like I said, I'm going to put a little small rocket stove in so that I can heat my coffee up, or I can keep my kids warm, or me warm on a hot or a cold day. And I won't, I'm going to probably end up building a bench back at my house and bringing it up and putting it in here because I set these walls up for my tallness and my wife and, my, <laughs> and obviously my children are not as tall as me. So I want to set, build a bench so that we can come in, sit down on this bench and she could clearly shoot right over it. We've got a shooting rail in there and these lines are tight enough where I could put my whole weight right down on them and it won't budge. So it'll be easy enough to go ahead and lay a barrel down on them and pull that trigger. So I'll take you inside the blind now and show you around and try to get you above up here if I can. We'll see how it works.
All right, guys, this is the top of it, as you can see. Just went ahead and took all those limbs, put them in, tried to overlap them as much as I could, get a nice little bevel going to them so that they'll drain the water out towards the outside instead of letting it fall down on the tarp. Take you for a quick little walk around. I'm not tall enough, so there's a divot right there, but... That's all the top. All right, guys, so now we're inside the blind, like I said it would be. Um, as you can see, I've gone ahead. I've got you tied up on a, my tripod right now around one of these guys. Got another one back here. So that helps pitch the top of my tarps downwards out like that. Like I said before, up top here, as I showed you already, we've got the netted web of the twine. I went in and took my tarps over it, tied them down. Now I've got the tarps, so as you can see, around me as my walls in here. Going to make a good wind barrier. Yeah, some wind's still going to get in, but not as much as would have if it was like usual, where it's just piles of twigs laid up here. This will be the main spot right behind me for my wife and I to sit. But I have, as you saw, a nice little tapered end. It goes down in like this to where you guys are, where that'll be where I'll put my rocket stove and stuff, basically between this pole and the pole that you're on and it'll give room for my kids to sit over on that side it's for somebody to sit here give me lots of area to, that if i see something down that way i can move down with the freedom of making no noises or if they come through this way or that way and i can't get a shot at them you know i can kind of duck down like i am now walk behind my whole little wall until i can get a nice clear shooting lane open and go ahead and take them because you know you're not always going to get the perfect shot but if you can make it possible but that's pretty much it guys this is my bushcraft do it yourself cheap as shit semi-permanent hunting blind i mean literally if i wanted to i could bring my kids and my wife out here and we could camp in this thing overnight and i wouldn't even have a worry especially not right now where it's how warm it is out no worries i'm only crouched down so that i can get in the camera view but I'll stand up and show you that I'm six foot tall and I can stand up in this and not even worry about hitting my head. And as I go down towards you guys, it actually dips down lower. So I actually have the same amount of space all the way down through. So I'm staying in full up, moving back and forth. Nothing. I can walk way over here. Nothing. Right here is where the door will be. I'm just going to go ahead and take some twigs and I'm just going to go ahead and mock up a door so I can just sit it up here and pull it back down so it doesn't make any noises. I might fashion a tarp to the back side of it just so it blocks the wind coming this way. Um, but as you can see, it's nice in here. No real big gaps anywhere for the water to come in or the snow. These guys are going to help support all of this up here so that when it does snow, if we get a heavy snow, I'm not worried because these guys are going to support a lot of weight this way. A lot of it. Same with this guy behind me. This will support more weight than you think. But all this webbing, this ties and stuff I got here, that's 110 pounds that each one of these lines can hold. So if you calculate that all together, I don't know what the hell it's going to be. But... It's going to be a decent amount. And yes, I know. I'm getting a little chunky. But season's coming. And that means I'll lose more weight. Because I'll be walking in the woods more. And mushroom season's coming. So we'll have some nice mushroom foraging videos. For everybody to check out. Um, I'll see if I can find ourselves some wild vegetables still. There's some stuff that shows up. That's you know going to be good in the fall. Mostly mushrooms in the fall though. I like to get a whole stockpile of them up. Dehydrate them and go all uh, i'm gonna try this year depending if i get a, a doe or a buck or at least a deer during bow season we're gonna try to put together an ocm hunting opening day or opening weekend special where we're gonna have a bunch of wild meats because in september up here we can start hunting squirrel we can get the early goose canadian geese season on and then a couple of weeks in october we can get duck and then if i already get a a, a deer by then bam you know i've already in turkey season if i can get another turkey come for a fall turkey 
you know, we'll have the turkey, wild turkey, we'll have the wild goose, we'll have the wild squirrel, we'll have the wild deer, venison, we'll have the wild duck, and then we'll have some of the for fresh forest, foraged mushrooms out of the woods here. I got a tree right over here. I can stand right from here and see that I've already got mushrooms growing on that tree. They're still small, but the mycelium, I caught that earlier. Mycelium is actually the actual mushroom. The mushroom that you see is actually the fruiting body of the fungus. Little science there for you. Um, so we'll get you some more knowledge on foraging. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about this. This wasn't hard, like I told you. You take your rope, you wrap it around the trees, get yourself, make yourself your own little homemade net up top. Get your tarp, drape it over it the way you need it to be so they're even. Try to overlap them by at least three to two to three, maybe even four inches so that the water can seep from one down to the other. Get yourself some of these poles when you got it all set up. We just made simple T posts. Um, you know, just took a twig, the other twig, twined them together in this in the little crotch area here, pushed them up here. Now the water is going to try to shed this way and that way. And then since it's kind of goes dips down this way, it'll dip down in here and then it'll also run off. Um, but at the same time, all the leaves from the branches I threw up there, that will help um, deter some of the water from actually even hitting the tarp. And then, like I said, when I was showing you the outside of the blind, if for some reason I come in and this stuff's all bogged down, I'll just take my knife and quickly just put a little poke in it and it'll drain it. And then from then on out, when it rains, instead of pooling, it'll just drain out. And I'm good with that. Once winter gets here and the snow hits it, this thing's going to be a, an amazing thing for the winter. Up here, it's not really fall I worry about. It's hunting in the winter because it can get damn cold up here and quick. One of our videos that we had last year we did, we went out hunting. It was it had to have been almost negatives out, if not, you know, negative six. I think that's what it was. I don't remember. It was a year ago, but pretty sure the temperature was. Heard a noise. Around like negative six. So, but thank you for watching today, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. Pound that subscribe button. Once we get up to 40 subscribers, one every 10 times we get a new subscriber, we'll get chosen at random. We'll get you some shirts, we'll get you a hat, we'll get you some stickers, some magnets, so you can show your love for Outdoors with the Common Man. Um, so yeah, enjoy guys. I hope this helps you guys out a lot. If you had the time, this probably would have only taken the materials already. This probably would have only taken maybe two days, two afternoons. But because I'm out on the road, and I want to get a couple days off a week, I spread this stuff out over time so that I can enjoy time with my family. My wife and my kids were out here helping me, but they wanted to head out home. So I said, all right, go ahead. We're all done for the day. I'll go ahead and make my video for you guys at your guys' house. And hopefully this helps. I really do hope you enjoy our program. And I'll catch you next time on Outdoors with the Common Man. Real videos for real people.